We're back. This is the uh, unscripted podcast. Yes, sir. We have the goat here today, DJ Craze. My dude, my dude, what's good, Cuddy? I'm very good, man. <laughs> Welcome to LA. Thank you, thank you. It's cold out here. It is a cold uh, LA. Mm. Um, so you're you're actually out here for a gig that you played um, just the other night, uh, yeah. which was a D and B set. D and B set at, at Respect. Right, yes, right on. And that went well, I assume. That was awesome. Awesome. That was mad fun. All the homies came out. Uh, I had done one last year, and I had. The best time of my life, so I was like, "Let's do that shit again this year for the end of the year." How like well, that was the last time you did a DMB set? Uh, before this one, yeah, yeah. So it was a full year, full. Maybe not a full year, but yeah, I think yeah, maybe a full year. Wow, yeah. So you don't, and do... I hadn't done one in like ten years, so it was like mad oh, special. Wow, yeah. but you're like you're kind of known uh, as you know producing D- DMB as well mm. and and playing DMB. Yeah, but but, the... but I hadn't done it in like a long time. So, so like, what's the what? What are the things that you're? What is what is what was? What would you, how would you describe the music that you play these days? Uh, well, that's gonna change. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for like the last couple of years, I've just been a DJ. I'm just there, pleasing people. Boring, yeah. <laughs> you know, just being a DJ. Right, rocking the crowd. Rocking the crowd. Right. But like, I'm switching all that vibes up for this year. I'm going back to old craze. I'm going back to just showing up and playing music that I like. If people fuck with it, they fuck with it. If not, don't care. <laughs> it's the attitude, man. Yeah. Um. And so, what what genres are you like listening to, or what's like the inspiration right now? For me, beats like that whole new movement: Ivy Lab, Shades, Shield, uh, Eprom, Alex Perez, uh, Balatron, myself. <laughs> like, yeah, just all that stuff. Like, you know they call it halftime but i'm like it's not halftime drum and bass it's not like it's more soulful and organic beats like it's more like what jay Diller would be doing mm. if he was into drum and bass it's more i mean just listen to ivy lab you'll you'll get the vibe right it's like kind of i mean you've played you've played a lot of different genres in your mm. routines and and on and on, in general a lot um and would you consider that like a continuation of like genres like dubstep and things like that or Kinda. It, it has influences of bass music and boom bap. Right. So that's what it is. And that's what attracted me to it. I was just like, wow, the, the two things that I love about music, the, the two things that like made me happy when I was young. So. And you did a set like that at, at Art Basel too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought down Ivy Lab for the, like the first night that I'm, I'm, I'm going to start a night at Goyo, a monthly of just like beats and drum and bass. Oh, dope. And that was the first night it was with Ivy Lab. It was free and it was dope. <laughs> and and you've, you've got another regular night in Miami as well. What, what's that one? I used to. 1-800-LUCKY. Okay. It was on Thursdays. It was me and Walshy. But kind of just stopped doing it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But Louis Arson kept it going. And whenever I'm in town, I'll, I'll still do it. But it's uh, it, it started off as like, I was like, yo, selection meets Caribbean vibes. <laughs> right? Because Walshy's ma- major laser, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. And, you know, so... Like some people got it, but like just being a DJ again, I was like, oh, I think we got to play music that they know, right? To get, you know, to get the party cracking, and wasn't I wasn't in it. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do something that wasn't kind of working, so I was just like, all right, cool. And what's what's like the Miami vibe right now? Like is like, um, Miami is Miami. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like whatever's cracking, they go for it. You know what I mean? That's why this Beats Night was so special, and like I still have people hitting me up, like, yo, what the hell was that music? Is it considered bass music? Is it considered hip hop? What is this? Like, this is dope. Like, there's not that many, like, nights where they play new music, you know? In Miami? In Miami. There's, like, Love Below, which is dope. They play, like, Soulful House, uh, Soulful Trap. It's different. They don't really go in with a lot of, like, popular music. But for the most part, it's all popular music. Yeah. I think, yeah. And, and like, I mean, Miami was kind of like a center. I remember they had the Winter Music Conference there. Yeah, yeah. And now, the, I guess, Art Basel's kind of that thing. Art Basel's tight, yeah. Art Basel, I think it's a better vibe <laughs> than, than conference Ultra Music Week. Because, like, Ultra Music Week is just a crazy-ass party, you know what I mean? Like, it's uh, electronic music to the max. But I think Art Basel is, like, the cool the cool new shit. Yeah, I've never been to the WMC, but I know, I mm. mean, I've heard about the legendary parties there. You you, know, you must have seen In all In the early that. days, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Shit, I used to do like competitions there. Did you? <laughs> yeah, they used, to, they used to have a DJ competition, uh, the Winter Music Conference, whatever DJ battle. Oh wow! I lost to DJ Domination. 
Who's that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> who's that? Sorry, DJ <laughs> Domination. I don't know who you are. Oh, man. He was like this dude that was, he would always do like the craziest body tricks. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? He was the inspiration for, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen my, my Spider-Man routine. Okay. you never seen that? I don't think so. Thank God. <laughs> uh, it was like the wackest routine I ever made in my life. Um, but yeah, he was the inspiration for that because like he would just do the wildest shit. He would do like a hollow back on the turntables. He would, you know, uh, forget my two scoops. I'd rather have my honeycomb and then he would bring out the honeycomb cereal. Oh, really literal? Just, you know, yeah, yeah just tricks. Is that like the only DJ value you've ever lost? No, I've lost not big ones. That's why I'm like, I always tell people I'm undefeated, yo. Yeah. Cause like it was all the big ones that I never lost in like, but Winter Music Conference I lost to him. That was it. <laughs> Damn. So I, I got a question. This, I mean, Miami's obviously got a Caribbean influence. Mm. So you, can you get away with playing like dancehall and stuff there a all lot? day? Yeah, all day for the and dancehall is like the move. Yeah, because that's and I mean, maybe I'm just being a bit naive, but in mm. my experience, it's not necessarily welcomed with open arms at a lot of parties in, in the states except in certain cities yeah. and miami would be one of those cities yeah like, i mean reggaeton <laughs> is pops off in miami right yeah and dance hall of course and yeah and is and what else is like is there any other like genres i mean obviously miami bass from miami miami bass doesn't even pop off that much in miami really because it's so old now right you know the kids don't know it and it wasn't like there was like new miami bass <laughs> you know what i mean right so the old heads get it but the young kids are just like all right this is like my grandfather's music <laughs> well you know what i mean like it's a shame it is because it's dope party music actually red bull did a miami bass night it was with myself dj laz uncle luke egyptian lover oh wow uh it was dope was magic mike involved at all was he no no he wasn't in that one no, nah, no, nah, he wasn't in that one, but it was nuts, and the vibe was dope. Uh, it was hosted by Yes Jules, and it was dope. Yeah. So, if like, what what would be the quintessential Miami based records if you were to play them, in your opinion? In my opinion, Poison Clan, Dance All Night, uh, Uncle Luke, I Want to Rock, Uncle Al, uh, Bass is gonna blow your mind, <sighs> Magic Mike, Drop That Bass. And Quet Shake, uh, Shake do the 61st. That's the one that's like, hold up, wait a minute, let us put some blue in. <laughs> um, yeah, those are the party rec, like the Miami based party records that I love. Like, those are the ones that I like. If you're from Miami and you hear these, you're gonna get a reaction. Or oh, actually, uh, Freestyle, Don't Stop the Rock. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's not Miami based, but when you works. play that in a Miami based party, it's the one. Right tempo and everything, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, when you were growing up, you grew up in, in Miami, and around that time, that was, like, what, 80s, 90s kind uh -huh. of time? Uh -huh. um, like, what was it like? What were those records like when you heard them for the first time? It was dope. It was, um, it's, it, it's what was playing on the radio. It's what my brother was playing in his car. He had, like, you know, the drop. He was one of the guys with the cars that go boom. Yeah, yeah. cars that go boom. That was him. <laughs> he had the Alpine. He had the 18 inch woofers in, in the back. And it was dope. It was like, you know, this is before internet and all that shit. So Miami had that vibe. It's like Miami bass was our music. Mm. We didn't fuck with hip hop because that was from New York. Right. We fucked with Miami bass and we fucked with freestyle music. And that's, that's what they were playing in the clubs. I couldn't get into clubs. So I was just listening to my brother, like, come home telling me, damn, when they played, uh, Tough crew, my part of town, fights broke out. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> and, you know, when they played, like, I don't know, fucking just, you know, all the shit that was playing on the radio, he's, you know, he would just tell me about it. And I was like, wow. And then when I was 15, I snuck into a club and I saw Magic Mike. Oh, wow. That was a game changer right there. Uh, but then, like, you know, when I was getting, when I was getting old enough to get into clubs, hip hop took over. So, Miami bass and freestyle was just just when I was like in elementary and middle school, but when I got to high school, it was all hip hop. But Miami 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 bass DJs, I mean Ma Magic Mike himself, he he like did, I saw this documentary recently, and he's like up there with a, a, a an 808, and like he's DJing like old samples to the 808, like the the level of DJing that that kind of music introduced mm. was really high. Like, mm. 
Th- I mean, was that? And you know he was the first platinum recording artist in hip-hop. I didn't know that. Yes, he was. Wow. Yes, he was. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, I think it was for Magic Mike Cuts the Record or one of those things. Oh, no, bass is the name of the game, the blue cover. I oh. might be wrong. I will Google it later. But, yeah, he was the first platinum recording artist. That's so dope. Mm-hmm. And, and, I mean, like like I was saying, his his DJ, and he's a, he's a killer DJ. Oh, my God. His cuts were like, <clears throat> his cuts, DJ Laz's cuts, uh, Jealous J, Jock D, those were the guys that I, I was like, I want to be like them. I want to do all that. All those, like. I don't know what the fuck those cuts are called, but <laughs> you know those like Miami bass cuts. So that was the. Fa- I was, would you say that's a foundation kind of genre for you and for me, yep. DJ? Yeah. For me, hell yeah, hell yeah. DJ Laz, hero. Wow. I would listen to him on the radio, and I was like, I want to be like Laz. That's dope. That was the man. And then so like, when you when you started DJing, when, I know we're not, I'm not gonna go down this rabbit hole too much. I know it's kind no of boring, worries. but <laughs> but the boom bap stuff started coming in, mm. and then um. And then you've obviously, but when did you get the taste for DMB? Like, how did that happen? Oh, DMB came way later. DMB came in. Uh, my first time in Europe was Munich. And uh, it was, I think, 96 or 97. And some dudes just brought me out there because they heard a mixtape. Mm. <laughs> right? And they were like, oh, this guy's dope. So, like, we're going to bring him out to Munich. This is before you did that? DMCs. One? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was before that. Because this was this is what influenced me to come into '98 with some drum and bass patterns. Oh shit! So I went to Munich, and uh, the guy that brought me out there, his name is Florian. Shout out Florian. What's good, Florian? Um, and he owned a record store. And so like right before the gig, like I went straight from the airport to the record store because I was like, I want to buy some records. On you know, I'm in I'm in Germany. I've never been here. I want to know what's popping. So, you know, there was like the techno and house air, uh, section. And you know, back then for a hip hop DJ, we were like, ugh. Yeah, yeah. I totally know. <laughs> Electronic music. What's that? And I was just like, all right, what's this? The covers look different. And it was like Aphrodite and Dillinger and Ed Rush and Optical. And I was like, all right. So I took some of those records. I, I, I played some of them. And I was like, what the fuck is this? It was like fast beats and bass. I was like, tight. And, uh, you know, it was like break beats, too. It was like fucking like um, ultimate breaks and, and beats sped up with bass lines. I was like, this is dope. You know, and I was—I still wasn't convinced that it was the shit. But I remember buying Dillinger's uh, Hard Noise record, and I was like, "Wow, this is." I didn't know the sample was Twilight Zone, but I was just like, "This sample is nuts, and the bass line is nuts." So then, for the party, I was like, I was in the front room playing like a hip hop set, and in the main room, it was DJ Hype and Shy FX. Oh wow! Yeah, heavy hitters. <laughs> yeah, and it was a big room, and after my set. You know, I was like, yo, let's get faded. And like, let's go to the back. And all this crazy music was playing. And one track that was playing, and, and this is what changed me forever, was Bambada by Shy FX. And it was basically like Rapper's Delight on 45. And people went nuts when they heard that. Fucking reloaded like two or three times. Fucking lighters in the air. The attention was all, was on the DJ. It was just a vibe. And at the time, this was like 96, 97, I was getting out of hip hop because hip hop was becoming materialistic. It was like- Bad boy era? It was the bad boy era. You know, I was like, this is not my vibe. Like I grew up early hip hop era where it was like Native Tongues and X-Clan and this kind of, you know, like empowerment. And like, it wasn't all about money and it wasn't all this other stuff. And I I loved uh, Biggie. Uh, that that was my favorite rapper, but I was like, my dude's wearing Versace now. Like, what's going on? Like, and shit was, it was taking a turn, and I was like, it's not my vibe anymore. And, and when I heard Bambada, and when I saw the drum and bass vibe, I was like, yo, this makes me feel like how I felt when I first heard hip hop. This mm-hmm. is new. It, it's exciting. It's future. I was like, boom, I'm in. And that was it. Well, wow. fucking jungle is for life. <laughs> I mean, like, cause I, I guess it was just a real, a really interesting. Uh, observation because i don't really obs- i don't really kind of see miami as like kind of a center for for dnb at all <laughs> right so when you went when you returned to the mm. states after that um like how did, how was that challenging when you i mean was that, what was that yeah, like? it's still yeah. challenging like my boys were like are you on drugs <laughs> like bro what's wrong with you crazy like you just you're just gonna go to this what's are you a raver <laughs> you know being a raver was a bad word then too yeah yep. so it was like are you raving and i was like 
bro, it's the future, bro. Like, this music is dope. It's like, I saw the vibe. You know what I mean? Like, back then, before internet, <laughs> like, you had to be there to experience it. You mm -hmm. feel me? It's like, I'm pretty sure if I grew up in Detroit and Chicago, I would have been a house at. Right. I, you were there and you experienced it. You know what I mean? Like, when I experienced the German bass vibe in Europe, I was like, wow. There's nothing like it in the states. So yeah, I kind of I actually think that's a really interesting observation too because I mm. I think a lot of music is made for the environment, you know. And as DJs, mm. we're often the people that play certain genres that are in those environments, you know. Like mm -hmm. I love I like Jersey Club and and Philly Club and and be more music. Right. But you know, waking up first thing in the morning, putting that on, isn't really the right vibe, you know. <laughs> yeah. But going to a club, it's just perfect. Or like hearing hyphy in the West Coast. Sure. It's like exactly. Psh, I can't wake up and hear that shit in Miami. It's not the vibe doesn't make sense but when i'm in the west coast and i hear zach playing a set i'm like <laughs> doing the thistle dance <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm like what, what is this yeah yeah but so yeah. i think that um it's it's really interesting that you say that because like, even now with the internet i don't i don't necessarily f feel like you can have those in, those experiences and even with the edm you know like i don't necessarily play a lot of edm it's not my pr preferred genre but mm -hmm. you know i've gone to a couple festivals and i've i've seen okay maybe this isn't for me but i get it yeah, I see the application, you know, for the festival music. Yeah. This is for a crowd, and mm -hmm. this this changes the whole relation the relationship with me and the music, you know, yeah, because yeah, yeah. if you listen to something on your headphones at home, and it's just the it's wild like, shit. It's like all rap music right now for me. Right, it's, it's not my thing, but then I oh, go really? to the club and I hear it. I'm like, oh, I get it. Right, you know, it's, yeah. it's a vibe. But I wouldn't wake up and listen to Little Pump. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, I mean, never. Yeah, yeah. So when you got when you started when you started playing drum, drum and bass, um. When you got into producing that, what, like, what was that transition like? Um, being in the German bass world, it was all about producers, right? Like, the only DJs really? were, like, Andy C. and Randall. That They were just killing it because they were just bad boy DJs. Mm. Um, and I was just a DJ, too. So I was just, like, when I, when I got into the German bass scene, they embraced me, like, it was mad love. That's <laughs> you know awesome. I mean? Like, they were just, like, because to them, it was a DMC hip hop boy co-signing them right you know and it was it for them they were just like this is dope because you know they, they weren't coming to the states like that mm. so they were just like oh shit he's gonna make this thing pop off over there or, or whatever or i don't help know the, the cause or help yeah, the yeah. culture and, you know i whatever the reason was they embraced me and it was mad love and that made me be like all right fuck it i'm gonna fucking push it even more now because like y'all fucking showing me love and it's dope but I knew that you had to be a producer in that scene to get more respect. And I really wasn't into producing, but I was just like, all right, I'm gonna do it just to do it. <laughs> and uh, I hooked up with my boy Juju and we started a label called Cartel Recordings. And he was helping me like get my ideas and you know, bringing them out. Like he, 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 I would give him ideas, he would engineer the shit, he would put his vibe in it. And it was like, boom, crazy Juju Cartel. And we would put out tunes done deal yeah cool and and now you've got slow roast which mm -hmm. is like would that you consider that a continuation of cartel or is that completely different no it was completely different when i started slow roast it was with kill the noise and our whole thing was like let's put out music that we like let's put out future thinking electronic music mm. and that's all it was i was the main a and r and uh now i have slow roast to myself so i'm gonna start putting out more music this and year louis louis arson's a part of that too yeah, Louis Arson used to be our label manager, but he's doing his own thing now. Okay. So yeah, so now it's just me. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. And you're working on, you're still doing a lot of production stuff as well. You've got a, yeah, a bunch yeah. of stuff. I have a Beats EP coming out right now, uh, January 11th. And yeah, I got Shield on it. I got Balatron on it. On it. I got John first, and then three tracks by myself. Dope. Yeah. Awesome. All beats, all that vibe. Cool. Yeah. And and you also work on production with Zach as well, right? Yeah, yep, yep. he just sent me a new one that I was like, wow, this is big. Yeah, man, that guy, speaking of production, got, mm -hmm. I, I just knew him as a DJ for the longest time, and then his mm -hmm. production just, you guys, what you guys have been doing with Two Cents is, is insane. Yeah, the earlier stuff wasn't as dope because I was engineering a lot of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, his engineering has gotten crazy, so like, now it's getting good. And like, the last couple things that we put out, we put out one tune with Flosterdamas, on, 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 on Hoodie Nation. Um, not with Floss or Thomas. Um But this new one is dope. And it's house. It's not oh, really? Even, yeah, it's house. This one is it's big. Wow. So so you mess with house too? Like yeah. you play? Yeah. 
mm. I don't play house music. But Two Cents for me is a different project than what I do by myself. Mm. Like for Two Cents, I want to be like fucking leading the DJ movement with everything, you know. But Craze is completely different from Two Cents. Okay. Yeah. And for this, any, everything I do with Zach, I want it to be the best DJ shit. Pushing it forward. Pushing it forward, but all genres and for the masses. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of the mentality behind the whole good DJing is important. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. He came up with that one. It's a really strong message. That guy's a genius. <laughs> yeah. No, he is. And, and honestly, I got to give him a, a massive thank, uh, shout out and thanks <laughs> because I feel like, you know, a lot of the, the, the fact that you're here even – you know, doing this interview is, is a, a, a great deal to do with him as well. Yeah, that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Zach. <laughs> Shout out Zach. Yeah, yeah. And how did you guys even meet, actually? Yeah, That's a question I wanted to... I wanted uh, to he has a different story. I don't... I'm, I'm getting old. I forget exactly how it started. What I think, how I remember it was, I heard him do a mixtape. Uh, a, a mix, sorry, not a mixtape. A mix on one of these LA stations, and I was just like holy fuck i had known of him he was he 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 had been down with fool's gold for a minute but this mix i heard it and i was like yo the thought put into every mix and like just his transitions and like his wordplay i was like whoa you know that's the the lost art form that's what i used to like about hearing like hubert mixtapes babu mixtapes all be junkie uh, mixtapes, you know. That's what I used to love about mixtapes, and I was like, he's doing that, but in a future way, with future records, with with records right now. And I was like, all right, shit, I hit him up, and I was like, yo, that mix was dope. And then I saw his. What year did he win Red Bull? Two thousand and thirteen or twelve? Yeah, it was one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Headspin, I think, was two thousand eleven, so it must have been two thousand twelve. Yeah. yeah. I saw that set, and I was like. Pfft. This fucking guy. And like for me, like I just want to be around the best DJs because that makes me better. So I was like, I hit him up. I was like, yo, we should work on a mixtape. He was like, okay, what do you want to, <laughs> what, what direction should we go in? And I'm like, uh, it has to be the best mixtape of all time. And he was like, <laughs> no pressure. Okay. <laughs> and I was, I was being like serious. I was like, got to be the best mixtape of all time. I want it to be like social. I want it to be fun. I want it to have skills. I want it to have everything. I want it just to be like, the best mixtape of all time. He was like, okay, fuck. So when he came to Miami, he played a, a show in Miami, and we sat down, and we were watching uh, Birdman. With Michael Keaton? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Birdman. All right. So we were watching the movie, and he he was saying shit that me and him were looking at each other like, intro. <laughs> he just kept saying shit. We were like, skit. And then from there, like, we just started uh, exchanging ideas back and forth, and first Two Cent mixtape came out, and after the the mixtape the mixtape was called two cents that's right and after that came out i was like we should make this a thing you know like you're the best in your world i'm the goat in my world <laughs> so i was like we should we should join forces and that was it that's dope mm. so uh, and you guys are producing music now and make, making a mixtape mm -hmm. and you're also uh, is it true that you guys are doing a radio show too is that you're able to speak on that we were going to start it we haven't got the response yet, but we have our podcast that we're going to continue doing. That's right. The podcast. Because the, the, the reason for the podcast was there's so much cool music that does not get played. And like there's so much shit that we like that we can't play out at our gigs. So we just started the podcast. And somebody's interested, can't, you know, can't speak on it, but we're waiting for a response. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the, that's the whole purpose of mixtapes and radio, right? Is to mm -hmm. give DJs a platform to play music that maybe isn't necessarily, like again, going back to that environment thing, isn't necessarily right for a club. Exactly. But it's something that you want to absorb and, and take the time. Yeah, and it's good music. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, like, obviously you've got a lot of, especially with production, you know, sometimes trying a production out at a club, like, how do you find that when you play a, one of your productions at a night? Like, do you like to put, like, kind of sneak it in or is it like a... Yeah, with all new music, I sneak it in. Because, <laughs> like, kids are dumb. <laughs> They just want to hear what they know, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, for new music, I got to sneak it in. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's ever changed, though. I think people always wanted to hear. Well, no, thing. no, because I was, I forgot what the hell I was talking to about this. I was like, yo, back in the day, before the internet, <laughs> uh, back in the day, like, DJs had individuality. Like, 
if you if you went to go see so and so, like he was gonna play these records that he found somewhere, and he was gonna give you that his flavor, and this other DJ was gonna give you his flavor of what he found when he was digging. Things were different back then, and like for me, like that's that's what I was doing. Like after I won DMCs and I got into drum and bass, like I would show the clubs. They're like people would be like, "Oh God, what is he gonna play?" <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope we like it. And I would do my shit, and they'd be like, "Wow, that was dope." I don't know what the German bass is, but killed it. Yeah. You know, like you won them over essentially. Yeah. Right? Like you were playing shit that you felt they needed to hear as a DJ. You wanted to bring them that new, new. And that was fun, <laughs> you know, because like you didn't have to play the the, the, the top tunes. Um, I already forgot the original question. Well, when, when did you think that changed though? Oh, when DJing blew up. Right. Right. Like DJing blew up. Everybody wanted to have the best reaction. To have the best reactions, you got to play the biggest tunes. And that was it. Everybody just wanted to be the the highlight of the night. Right. The, everybody wanted to have that reaction, you know? And for me, like, I like the awkward reaction. Right. <laughs> I like the boom. <laughs> you know, I like that vibe where it's like, okay, I'll give it a, a shot. All right. And then by the end of the, you know, they're like, oh, that was dope. I never heard that shit in the club. Yeah, it's actually it's something Sonny and I were just talking about like yesterday. Mm. Just how like you know it's all well and good to play like the biggest songs, mm. but playing them in succession, it's just like what are you doing that for? Like, yeah. wh what are you trying to do? Are you trying to build a vibe? Are you trying to create? Like, are you trying to introduce music? Like, as a DJ, do we have a responsibility to introduce music? Of course we do. Yeah, <laughs> but I think you know, I I do it all the time too. I just play the biggest tunes like just to get that reaction and just, just to have people be like, he killed it. Right. But doing that Beats party in Miami, people were going, whoa. Like I would hear, whoa, whoa. Every, mm. every, every drop, people were like, whoa. And then the following morning, all my messages were like, yo, I don't know what the fuck that was, but it was dope. Thank you. Yeah. Are you doing it again? And it's like, boom. You know, it's like, for me, it's like, it's like when you go to those uh, sushi bars, and you don't order shit. The chef is like, boom. That's what's good. That's what's good. Yeah. And you're 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 like, cool. Like that's that's the kind of DJ I want to be like. I yeah. want you to come to my fucking night, and I'm gonna serve you the marvelous shit. You might not like it. You might like it. But at the end of the at the end of the night, you're gonna be like, that was special. That was cool. That that was something different. Like I didn't expect that. You know what I mean? Like, that's. I'm gonna start a night like that. That's and that's the, that's the intention <laughs> of that night that you're starting. Yeah. yeah. Well, that night is gonna be all beats and drum and bass. Right. Uh -huh. And that's kind of, I mean, do you think that's important to like to throw your own night as opposed to just showing up to a club and expecting people to to vibe with what you're doing? I feel like yeah. Now I now I feel yeah. It's you have to like start your own thing. You have to be your own person. Your own you have to yeah. Cause like. If you come see Craze at a Top 40 club, you know you're going to hear Craze spinning Top 40 right. hits. If you come to see Craze at nights where it's like even drum and bass, you're going to hear Craze play drum and bass. If you go to a Craze night where Craze is like, yo, I'm going a, I'm to a show you what the fuck I like, you might get all kinds of shit. You might get, you might get beats. You might get old school hip-hop. You might get new rap. You might get drum and bass. You might get house. You might get Switch House, like that era, Blog House. You might get mm. whatever the fuck I'm into. And I feel like that's better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? For sure. For the people that care. Right. If you're just trying to go out and forget your troubles and you worked all week and you just want to hear Drake, that's cool too. But you can probably find that other, at other places, right? You can find that, you can find that everywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the normal. That's the, that's the standard. So when do you think that like what, if could you pinpoint a time where you feel like that changed like or or people that's that were part of that change? I mean I don't want to call anyone out or anything, but you what do you mean? Like where it changed from you know people going to a, an event or a nightclub to hear a DJ play and just trusting them mm. to a point where they just wanted to hear the hits, because like I mean I see I see Zach and I see I see the the way he kind of navigates that mm -hmm. that world like he can play pop records so well that <laughs> yes. I like them you know exactly. Um, exactly, and he'll play like you know a Justin Bieber song next to a Muramasa song or something, and it makes perfect sense. Yeah, and yeah. I'm still getting to hear like something that's, you know, what I think is a bit more unique, and yeah. and obviously something that everybody knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he, that guy's like, 
dad. He's the shit. Um, when did dad change? I mean, blame the internet again. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, it's faceless. We, you know, it's the internet. Oh no. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, people used to trust the DJs. Like, like now they don't give a fuck about the DJs. Now you're there for them, where before they were there for you. Hmm. You know, now now it's just like I don't give a shit. Here, can you play this one? Right. You know, or I hate this shit. <laughs> you know, it's like oh, you're asking for Mo Bamba at like ten. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Leave me alone. Trust me. Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's plenty of time to hear the songs. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's that's what I think it is. People stop caring about the DJ. And and do you think like um, the way DJs are playing these days? How how? What's your opinion on that? You seen the video, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. I guess I just want to hear it from you know. From, yeah. Um, from your perspective, I think most DJs just you know they everybody plays it safe. Everybody's just cheerleading. Everybody's just there, just to please people, you know. And you know we should be, but like I said, my vibe is changing. I'm not. I don't. I don't want to be there for that reason anymore. I want to. I want people to fucking put some. Put some respect on our names. You feel I me? Mean? Like I want them to come and see us do us, not us do them. Right. Pause. Or... <laughs> but it's. I mean, I guess that's looking at at you know the music and the performance of music as like an art form, right? Yeah. We are artists. <laughs> right. Yeah. Totally. Right. Makes perfect sense. Right. And I, I, I guess I, I was I always have a conversation with my friends about this because you know it's it's like well you know a DJ's job is to play songs for the people whatever but. There's a difference between being, you know, a DJ that has a job and a, and being an artist. Yeah. I think that's a really something that, you know, is probably something that DJs pr probably should consider as, you know, what their priorities are, right? Yeah. Yeah. I and and uh, you know, look at producers that play their own music. They're artists and they're they're up there playing their shit. Well, not a lot of them. They're all crowd pleasing as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know, I I respect like DJs like producers, I'm sorry, producers like Troy Boy. Like Troy Boy will play only his music, maybe a couple of hits here and there, but it's mostly his music. Carmack, mostly his music. That's an artist right there. That's, he's showing you his vibe, his flavor. You came out to see him. You know, you want to hear his music. And, you know, those guys are dope. But DJs, since we're not producers like that, we should go in there and blow heads. You know what I mean? Like we should go in there and give them something they've never seen before, instead of giving them what we know is gonna make them go ah. And that's the performance part of being a DJ. Then. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. Even even when you do routines, like you know, you're you're taking something they know and you're flipping it. That, that's a performance, and that's that's something that you know is different than from what they see all the time. Mm. Mm. And how important are routines? I mean, routines are like the thing I'd say I know you the most for. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like. Your routines are by far the most engaging routines in the game. Thank you. <laughs> but I mean, without question, I mean, it's kind of I would say that that most people would agree with that. And I think that um, like how like when you come up with routines, like how much time do you spend on on just making a routine, and and how often you know do you do these things? I don't do them that often anymore. <laughs> and my boy was like infamous. He was just like, bro, you got to put out one every year. And I'm like, I don't. For me, it's like whenever creation taps me on the shoulder and is like, yo, you need to, whenever I feel it is when I do it. I don't do it just to do it. I did one just to do one like a couple years ago and it was not that good. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like I was forced into doing it and I was like, it wasn't my greatest thing. And like, I want every single one that comes after the next to be the greatest thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? If I want, you know, so I come up with routines like it could take a week, it could take two weeks. It could be like me planning something out for like two, three months. Like I'll get ideas and I'll just write shit down. I'll just be like, I know what I want to do. And then when I start practicing, I'm like. <laughs> and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. It just starts coming out. That's awesome. Yeah, I so, have no idea. So detox then. Let's yeah, talk about let's that. Let's talk about detox. So coming what, soon. <laughs> it's coming soon. What what is what is detox? Is it uh, what does it mean to you? Like how how would you describe detox? Detox will be the last routine I ever do, and it's gonna be the greatest routine ever made, and it's gonna be a fucking movie. It's the swan song. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I guess it's your final hurrah. It's, it's my it's my hey look. 
I've done it all. Here's the last one. And uh, I dare anybody to top this shit. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I re- I'm, I'm going in creating this thinking like that. So it is going to be the shit. It's going to be the most amazing shit ever. Yeah. But so it's coming soon. It's coming soon. <laughs> it's coming dot, soon. Dot, 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 dot. That's dope. <laughs> but it is coming soon. I'm not fucking with y'all. It's coming. It's coming. I have the intro ready. I have all the ideas ready. I haven't created the part that I think is going to blow heads, but it's in my head. So it'll come out. That's cool. When I was watching um, Goldie Awards earlier this year, I heard uh, it was really a really great moment in that broadcast where you and A-Track are talking, mm. or I guess A-Track's talking about you guys meeting. And he was saying something to the effect of like, he he realized that you guys were going to battle or something. And he was like, I don't want to battle this guy. <laughs> Same. Same. <laughs> and so you guys came to an agreement. Yeah. That you guys weren't, wouldn't battle each other. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. 97. Yeah. Um, I had known of him. So I was like preparing for him. And then when we were in the practice room right before the competition, you know, he did his thing. We were like, look, we're already here. Might as well show me what you're going to do. And we were like, all right, cool. So he started doing his shit. And I was like, <laughs> this guy's getting good you know what i mean like because he was just a little kid yeah i mean i wasn't that older than him but i was already like you know seasoned battle dude and i was like yo this guy's a problem and i know he was with the pickles but he wasn't active in the pickles you know he was like an honorary member and like we were starting the allies and i was like bro i don't want to battle this guy no more like it's too much stress <laughs> <laughs> and he has too much hype and and i know where he's going with all this shit because like, he just kept getting way better and way better so i was just like bro when you get back to canada just think about joining the allies i'm i'm sure develop will co-sign i'm sure infamous will love to have you in the crew i would love to have you in the crew i'm shook i don't want to battle you no more i think it's a better idea if we got together and we just killed everybody and he was just like i'll think about it <laughs> i'll talk to Kubert. and then boom that was it and then you guys did a, a succession of releases together. You you guys did um, some records. You put out some records, right? Uh, battle records? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ammo records. Yeah, yeah. That's we right. Put out a, a couple of battle records. P Thug designed all the covers. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. P Thug that... designed all the the Cash Money era covers. They were great. Yeah, they were amazing. Uh, yeah, that was good times. And then you guys did, I think I've talked to um, A Trek about this too, but you guys did the beat battle, the beat down. Yeah. Ally, allies the beat battle yep the beat down yeah that shit was dope it was a uh, invitation only like we picked all the people that we thought were the the best at the time it was dope the first guy that won he went on later to become a famous trap producer that's right yeah yeah he's uh since announced that. yes yeah okay trouble yeah yeah Uzi. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was still a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out Uzi. Shout out Uzi. Yeah. yeah, he was the first one to win the battle. Wait, we only had one battle. Is that right? Just one? Or do we have two? I'm think. I I, I was. It's either one or two. I'm not yeah, sure. But I figured one or two. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I'm forgetting shit all the time. <laughs> yeah. And then, so what's up with the allies these days? Like, is it still a, a crew? Like, do you guys still have a? Kind we of... had lunch the other day. Me, Infamous, and A Track in Miami. Like, it, it kind of like broke broke up for a little bit but it was like just bullshit you know we were young stupid big-headed egos <laughs> you know what i mean but everybody's cool with each other now it's, it's all love so yeah we were thinking about like maybe doing a documentary or some shit like that yeah i mean what you guys did was so you know and ins- in- inspirational to like a lot of djs at that time and there was a yeah. I mean, dare I say it, kind of like the peak of turntablism. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. 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 So and yeah, we're, we're thinking about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. But no, no, no. It's, yeah. a, it's a good thing. We're, I, want, I, want to, I want to make it happen. It just has to be done in the right way. Like, you know, I see like documentaries of like things that happened back then. And I'm like, oh, man, we had a dope story, too. Like, you know, we were like the East Coast superpower. And like, New so York helped a lot with making us who we were because they like offered up the spot to practice in and so york so york yeah. oh, i don't know that yeah, yeah that's where we made up all the, all the routines and shit oh wow that's yeah, a york headquarters in new york did you guys have anything to do with like their um that skate video they put out called mixtape i think so you guys did i think so yeah yeah i think 
we provided the music or some shit. I don't even know. That was a great, that was a kind of a landmark skateboard. Yeah, and video. that time in New York with tableism being at the peak and all of us doing what we were doing, it was so dope. It was yeah. so dope. And when it was, it was the, 99 was the only time DMCs was held in the U.S. Really? The world's. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Hammerstein Baldwin. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was that was a really interesting time intersectionally. Like all these different kind of cultures were really close. Like mm-hmm. skateboarding, mm-hmm. DJing, hip hop, mm-hmm. production. It was like a an interesting time. Fashion, you know, like a yeah. lot of things like we're seeing kind of come back now. Mm-hmm. We're from that era. Do you think ESDJ Co is gonna come back? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be tight. I was fucking around with Zach, being like, "Yo, we should be the new ESDJ Co." Our shirts sell out like in thirty minutes. That's right. <laughs> like we should take over this brand. Like you know, you're like. Yeah, ESDJ Co. Shout out. Who 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 owned ESDJ Co.? I have no idea. Mm, shout out to the owner of that shit. Bro. Yeah, that's a good idea. It was, a, it was an incredible brand. I mean, I remember yeah, man. being a massive fan of that. Same. Fucked up my back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were saying that. You, uh, you, you've you messed up your back. Mm. Um, carrying too many records. Carrying records. Doing this shit all day. Yeah, my back is fucked. DJ's got to watch their back. I'm getting old. Yeah, watch your back. Don't do this. Like DJ like this, it's better. It's better for your form. Yeah. Cool. And so what's what's next? I guess with with Craze, what's what's kind of like on the horizon? You got your beat tape coming out. Mm-hmm. Doing more podcasts. Doing more podcasts, more two cent stuff. Uh, this year's gonna be really cool. Like I said, I'm going back to just not giving a fuck. <laughs> uh, I got this little routine that came out. That's tight. <laughs> Detox coming soon. And uh, more slow roll stuff. I'm going to relaunch the label. More slow roll stuff. And I don't know, like two months from now, I'm going to change my mind. So we'll see where I'm at in two months. Take it, take it as it comes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I'm, I'm freestyling this, this whole shit. It's pretty cool though, man. Like the way you are, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about actually today was the way you were in, engaging with other DJs and social media. Mm. Like you're active on there. <laughs> um. Now I am. <laughs> <laughs> was there, would you say there was a point where you were not? I didn't. I I I was never that guy, and I still don't want to be that guy. I'm only doing this shit because it's what you have to do. But like for, for me, I'm like, if I could not be on social media, I would love it. Really? I would love it. It takes too much work, too much effort. It's fuck boy shit. I don't fuck with it. I don't like it. I don't like having to engage with people on shit that I don't want to be doing. You you consider it part of the game, kind of part of it is. It's part of artist. it's part of everything. It's part of it's just how humans are now. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, hey, guys. <laughs> I'm here. I'm having the best time of my life. And you don't necessarily want to feel like you have to share that kind of. No. You know. I, I had this conversation with my daughter the other day. I was just like, you know, the artists that I like aren't even on Instagram. Like, when I was growing up, I didn't know what the chick from Portis had looked like. Right. I just knew that she was amazing. And like the first time I saw her, I was like, that's what she looks like. Holy shit. It's like the mystery was amazing. Yeah. You know? It was like not knowing everything about somebody was like, you know, first time meeting Qbert. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> fucking alien. What's good, Qbert? I'm a I'm a big fan. Like, yo, wow, it's fucking Qbert in the flesh. Now it's like, you know, everything about your artist. And like, it's just I don't want to know everything about somebody. Like I just mm-hmm. want, I just want, I want your art form to speak for who you are. I, I don't. I get disappointed a lot by those guys. Hey guys, right? You know, I have this thing coming out. I love y'all. Thank. Without you, there would be no me. <laughs> it's like, oh, bro. I thought you were cool. <laughs> yeah, you're I, just like everybody else now. I think that what you what you're talking about with the mystique is really really important because you know even talking to you know like people from a, an older generation than us, um, mm-hmm. the way they talk about the artists of their generation is just so, like they 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 really almost worship them as gods in, in ways, and they think about the way that they you know, can, you know, produced music was kind of like a spiritual way in in, mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, and and music is such a spiritual experience, right? Like you were saying, mm-hmm. you know. When you went to hear drum and bass, it was really like it, it totally inspired you, yeah. And that's why I guess music is used in in religion and such a big part of like connecting humans together, yeah. And it's it, I guess that social media just eliminates that for you. Yeah, social media is whack. 
It's so horrible. But in saying that, like, you know, you're when you're on there, you know, I see you reaching out and giving praise to like kind of younger DJs. And I think that re that's, that's really oh, yeah, awesome, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? I mean, I try to use my social platform to one, bring awareness to a lot of shit that I believe in. Mm. <laughs> Two, you know, show love to the future generation. I'm always, I'm always bigging up the, the new kids because like this is a dying art form. And like if we don't embrace the young kids and big them up and make them feel special, I feel like shit's going to be gone in like five, six years. You know what I mean? Like, so, Do you yeah. really feel it's dying? You like The art form is like I hear the dumbest shit all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, it sounds like noise. Eh, just play the songs we want to hear. You know, just, I don't know. It's just, there's no interest in it from the younger kids until they see some, like, dope shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, young kids, when they see, and I hate to be bragging, but when they see my routines, they're like, what the fuck is this? Or when they see me in a club, they're like, we didn't know DJs did that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, word because you're being fed all this bullshit you know what i mean like you're not being fed the real shit mm. because the real shit to the masses isn't cool because they just want to hear one two three jump right so you know it's like we have to embrace the new kids that are doing cool shit and that are like going against the grain and like you know doing cool shit who, who are some of those new kids would you say uh you know k-swiss uh, uh, Rena, uh, Livia, like, I feel like she could be a problem, right? In the future, um, and it's weird that it's like kids, and then there's this gap, and then us old heads, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like, where the fuck is it in between? Like, did everybody just become producers for that 10 year range, you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, those kids are the ones I'm going blank right now. Who's dope right now? Who do you think is dope right now? I think like I mean I it's one of the first people that I I remember you like really picking up on social media was Manuel. Oh yeah, but he's what like thirty something. Yeah, I mean I don't. My, my, <laughs> I'm my sorry, Manuel, if you're not thirty something. <laughs> my scale of of who's of people's age is way off. Though. Yeah. So I mean but I think Manuel. Of course, is, like, Manuel for me is the guy that should be the champ right now. Fucking, he's amazing. Everything he does, I'm always like, bro, why aren't you competing? Why aren't you more? fucking beating people down and shit yeah you know he yeah he's dope yeah and i saw i mean buck buck who won the beat battle buck like, rogers yeah buck rogers oh yeah, yeah he's dope that was really like i've we we definitely like had an eye out for that guy for a while because he's yeah. been killing it um he murdered it so so hard at, at the goldie awards it was undeniable i was like <laughs> we just looked at each other like yep he won <laughs> yeah um homie from um new york uh younger guy i can't remember his name off the top of my head Wells? Dwells, that's the Dwells guy. Dwells is dope. Yeah, he's kind of on the younger side. I don't know how old he is either, but yeah, yeah. Um, he's uh, when I I remember seeing him. Just he's killed routines this year, and oh, he's a beast. Yeah. Uh, there was somebody else that I was thinking of right now. Shit. Oh, Brandon. Brandon. Brandon Duke. Yeah. He's gonna be a problem. Yeah. He's gonna be a problem. And I I mean I guess that's what's so good about like the Goldie Awards is like seeing people having a platform and mm -hmm. and and you guys all like kind of supporting them in that way, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like a combination of tableism and beat making. Yeah. So it's like we're trying to push both boundaries and like, yeah. Yeah, I I, th I mean, again, just going back to that, um, you know, the art of turntablism and, and, and where it is right now, um, I was I've been having this uh, this discussion. I have it a lot, actually, about, you know, what it is to, to be a turntablist. Like, you don't even need to necessarily be a turntablist, but approaching DJing in a creative way is really, really important because yeah. not only do you... Uh, not only is your job to play music to you know s you know satiate a crowd or whatever but it's to have a difference a point of difference mm. and you know like turntablism came was born out of that yeah you know like when people would go and see jazzy jeff he'd be doing crazy shit the go yeah oh yeah <laughs> definitely yeah and you know the way he would be putting things together you know i mean i was with scratch bass and he broke down like one of the songs off you know one of the, one of the early songs of jazzy jeff's first records where he's got a mandre sample mm -hmm. and a breakbeat and he's mixing that live and this is you know this is just like he just figured that out and this has been done back in like 80 yeah something <laughs> yeah and this is before mashups were a thing this is before serato was a thing this yeah is i before... mean like turntablism isn't just scratching and doing the boom it's it's what you're saying it's like taking something and making it something new and sounding fresh it's like 
people ask me, who's your favorite DJ? I'm like, fucking Zach. And he's not a tableist. Like, he, I think he even hates being called a turntableist. Right. He's the fucking sickest dude because he'll flip shit up. And, you know, like you said, introduce new shit and, like, make things work. Like, even if it's not a wordplay thing that works, I look at the fucking screen and I'm like, oh, shit, the titles work. Right. I get you, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's just a sick-ass DJ slash turntableist. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that's that's a really a important thing, I think, for younger DJs. And this is just my opinion, but mm. is like, well, what's going to make you different from everyone else who's just playing those same five, six, exactly. 20 songs? Like, how are you going to deliver that package mm-hmm. in a, you know, in a way that has got your stamp on it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And turntablism is one of those keys. You know, it's like mm-hmm. you can do it with turntables. You can do that same thing on CDJs or a controller if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, I, it's better when you do those things live. Right. Like, it's cool to, like, have an edit and you're just like, boom. Right. But I, with turntablism, it's dope when you do it live. You know, it's, it's cool. There's an element of risk involved and yeah. an element of skill being presented, right? An element of skills. Yeah. Skills is key. <laughs> Word. Awesome. Well, I guess that kind of like some summarizes all the things that I want to talk about, but was there anything else that you wanted to, to rap on or? Oh, you got a beat? I could rap on it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, nah, I'm good. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Craze. Yeah.